Hi guys, Lionheart here, and uh, today I'm interviewing James Russell, the uh, lead designer for the Total War series. And we're going to go through some uh, questions submitted by you guys and the community from a vast uh, sort of uh, array of topics for Rome 2, which uh, uh, both myself and Prince Masson have had a chance to play today, and it's been absolutely awesome. So, um, kicking it off. So, the province system is, is, is basically the idea that you have a province that's made up of you know, three or four regions, say. Um, and the, the purpose of that system is really to create to, 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 to create a huge amount of strategic depth, right? There's, there's loads of regions in, in the map. Um, but to group those regions together um, into a more manageable set, right? So, for instance, you only have to think about, you've only got one instance of, of public order or, or, or cultural breakdown. Um, that, that, that is across multiple regions in, in a particular province. So it means you've, you know, when you're thinking about public order, you don't have to think about you know hundreds of regions. You just have to think about a smaller number of a, a smaller number of provinces. And that's not just a sort of streamlining. It also kind of adds some interesting gameplay because it means oh, you know, I actually want to capture the last region in this province so that I can therefore um, have have control to grant edicts across or issue edicts rather across and across the province um, because you need to control every region um, to get. Oh, we got some back backing music. There. <laughs> so, so the, the, the purpose there is, 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 is again streamlining management, but actually adding some interesting gameplay. So you know you'll want to complete a province um, in order to, in order to issue edicts, um, and it means that another another purpose of it is that um, a province has a single province capital. It's the, the sing, a single kind of walled city that you have to um, fight for. Um, but what it means is that we can have other settlements in other regions that are not the province capital. Those are not walled cities, and that means that you've got a bigger variety of battles. Basically, you know, they're not all um, siege battles where you've got to bombard down the walls. Um, so it creates a, it creates a bit more of a mix of different battle types. Brilliant. Yeah. I mean, in terms of modding, look, we really value the modding community, and we think that you know, having the game moddable really helps, and having a great variety of mods out there really, really helps. Kind of increase the longevity of the of, of the game. You know, it keeps people interested. It adds variety of gameplay experiences. You know, um, so <clears throat> you know, we I, I I don't know that we can necessarily. We're not guaranteeing that we can re release you know modding tools certainly for launch, but we we just do our best um, yeah. you know to keep things to keep things coming. So With the success you know, of the uh, Steam Workshop for for Shogun Two and, and the the Ted yeah. Battle Map Ed, so that was a been huge uh, help for the modding community yeah. and expanding that further. You know, and we just we just yeah, we we're just gonna try it, we're just gonna keep trying our best. Yeah. Um, but in terms of launch, right now the entire team is just one hundred percent focused on on, on actually just yeah. getting Rome to as, polish as, as balance should be, yeah. <laughs> and uh, and just making making the game at launch the best it can be and then we'll um, yeah we'll then we'll then we'll be thinking about you know other things mm. afterwards. Yeah so you know we've got we've got we've got different different weather types in the in, in the game. Um, I mean they create very different kinds of atmosphere. Um, we're we're looking at the kind of influencing influence of, of, of weather on um, on things like spotting as well, um, because one of the interesting new features of the, on the battlefield is this visibility system, yeah. um, which is not just in terms of things like you know hiding in forests, but but also the actual you know, the true line of sight um, fe feature, right? Where different units have different sort of spotting ranges and so on, and what that means is that you know you'll need to do some, you'll need to do specific kind of scouting behaviours to really understand where the where the enemy might be on different battlefields, and and you know think things like you know battles at night or reduce visibility, you know. It'll have effect on that on that kind of thing. Yeah. Rome obviously has its has its families and you know each one has you know, you'll, you'll pick one and that will give give certain advantages and, and, and so on. Um, and you know there'll be rival families so you, you'll you'll be raising generals and some of them will come from different families and you can act on those guys in different ways. Um, and similarly you know with Carthage there's Carthage had a Senate. Um, there's different dynasties in control of Carthage. You can choose to be one. So it's kind of an analogous, uh, and it, it works in an analogous way. Um, you know, in in, in monarchies, um, you know, some of the Eastern kingdoms, it's really all about you and um, you know, rival, um, <coughs> basically nobles, right? And you've got to watch out that you know, if you raise a general that's not from the royal family, you know, maybe he become too big for his boots, and you've got to watch out for him because he can decide that maybe he should be in charge. You know, as you said, you can send an army out onto the sea and transport ships and automatically create create transport ships and go on to sea. But of course, in ports, 
you can construct specialized naval vessels and, and basically basically fleets and you can merge those so effectively what that means is you've got a proper naval fleet escorting um, an army that is in transport ships um, and that makes you obviously much more powerful at sea because the transport ships themselves at sea are going to be are going to be pretty vulnerable um, so absolutely important to construct proper navies as well um, in order to in order to defend your, your transport ships but of course you know navies the, the big difference is we kind of you can see we're kind of breaking down the barriers between land and sea, really. Yeah. Um, you know, so armies can go onto the sea. But also, navies can directly attack ports and actually capture them. So that means for the first time, a navy, a pure navy, um, can actually capture territory in a total game. And what that, you know, that really makes, um, it, it forces you to think strategic, much more strategically about, about what's going on, um, on on the sea. So it's, it, it, it really, you know, previously, navies have really just been containers for armies and actually you only conquer territory with an army so this this mixes it up a lot and i think yeah. adds a lot of you know interesting strategic depth to the game yeah i mean <clears throat> in terms of um the campaign we're absolutely supporting um you know multiplayer campaign uh, 1v1 um, one plus one co-op as well so you can play with play with a friend against the ai um, um fundamentally um we want to you know, we want to create. You've got these gameplay experiences that in, in single player roam, right? And we want to we want to support those in, in, in multiplayer. Um, so, uh, in terms of the battles, um, we've got ranked battles, unranked battles. We want to have leaderboards. Um, you've got one v one battles up to four. four. Um, so we want to support all those game modes. One, one of the one of the big uh, kind of new things is that instead of a sort of small list of maps that you play on, um, you can actually choose to play. Um, on any battlefield in the campaign map, so you, you effectively have the campaign map there, and you can you can say, okay, I want to fight there or there with this kind of battle type. Um, so effectively, that means tens of thousands yeah, of, that's, of, that's of maps, yeah. which is which is which is huge. Um, but we're not we're not we're not doing an avatar campaign specifically, yeah, right? Sick. We're focused on you know we've we've got this game experience with all these different factions, um, all these different battle types and maps, um, and, and and we're focused on delivering a single player and multiplayer experience for that. Brilliant. Well, fundamentally, you know, we want to, we, we, you know, we want to keep that idea of being able to research technology, being able to um, you know, create a, a civilization that, that that might be particularly, you know, better at research as well. So you can kind of buff your research rates and so on. Um, there's different, there's different trees to research, um, lots of different technology, um, but fundamentally, it works in a, in a, in a similar fundamental way that the players will be familiar with from before. Um, but different cultures will have different kind of research lines. So there's some, there's some interesting. Um, you know, variation across across cultures. Yeah, I mean, you know, we've really focused on, um, I guess, trying to make make sure that the um, you know the units look fantastic and varied. Um, so things like we've got facial animation for the officers. We want them to sort of react in a human in a human like manner. That's really where the where the focus has has gone. Um, you know, certainly you'll see them getting you'll see them getting tired. Um, you know, their animations change. Um, and uh, you know that's something we've got to, at the moment we, we've got to improve the balance because they get tired a little bit easy <laughs> a little bit too easily so we got, we got, we got to you know that, this is one of the things that we're trying to you know we're, we're still kind of balancing um, as we as we get towards the release date well yeah absolutely I mean there's, there's several different types of things going on right so we've got you know very very different from original Rome we've got you know a huge number of factions every region is controlled by you know a different kind of a different a different faction a different tribe um, so there's a massive number <clears throat> that you start the, the start the game, um, you know, and these can die off and reemerge. Um, what you were talking about with the generals um, is this effectively this kind of idea of civil war. Um, so you've really got to watch, you know, um, the, the the relative influence. For instance, if you're playing as Rome, as Rome, the relative influence that your family faction has um, in the Senate, right? If you have too much influence, others might get jealous of that. You know, think you're becoming a dictator. Or if you have too little, they might think oh, he doesn't have authority. Maybe I should be in charge. So, what, and, and what the exact mechanics of that vary in terms of the kinds of rebellion that you get. But fundamentally, um, you know, when, an, when when one of these generals decides that they're going to that they're going to mark, if if your power is low, they'll decide that you might be declared enemy of the state. And you'll have to march on Rome, right? Whereas, um, if if um, your power's too high, they get they think you're becoming a dictator. They'll they'll rebel. But it all depends on their relative influence in the Senate. Um, and the idea is not just to create a separate faction, right? That is a rebel 
one of, you know a, a different Roman faction. Um, you know their goal will be to march on Rome. Well, um, it's not it's not it's not it's not a playable faction. Um, you know we've got lots of candidates for um, for what we for what for what we want to you know do. Um, but I think um, you know lots of people will have their own particular particular favourites. Um, it's always a hard choice. But the thing is, we actually need we want to create kind of. Um, you need content elements for each faction, right? So it's not just about oh, let's just open that faction. It's about actually trying to, you know, create unique um, elements of content to make that faction feel special. Because that's one of the goals, right? We want we want to make sure that there's loads of replayability and that each faction um, has something unique about it. Um, but yeah, you know, um, we'll see what yeah, we'll see what we do. Well, um, yeah, there's two questions, I guess. Um, so. You know the diplomacy is richer than we've had before. You know, there's, there's, there's. We want to make the the AI factions feel like real human beings, right? So they'll have some of them will have. Um, they'll react differently to the way that you behave. And some will be more vengeful. Some will be more forgiving. Um, and we want to try and open that up in terms of how the player, what the player can see a little bit more. Um, so you know, we want <clears throat> the way you act towards a faction can annoy or please other factions as well. That's 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 really quite important. Um, we've got new types of alliances as well because sometimes you know you want to have an ally but you don't want to be dragged into all their wars so you've got things like non-aggression pacts where you can just say okay we're not going to attack each other right but you don't get you don't get dragged into their wars or you can create a defensive alliance so you only you only have to get dragged into a war in defending them if they get attacked right or you can have a different a full alliance where you know you, it's it's like the traditional situation right where you where, where you can end up being dragged into unwanted wars and that's all part of the gameplay um, the dignitary character um, you know each yeah then we've got these kind of three fundamental agent types and um, they're expressed slightly differently depending on the culture on, 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 on the culture but um, you know the, the, the dignitary is kind of your yeah, your fixer and he can do all sorts of all sorts of interesting things I, I, you know I think I think Actually, there's a huge amount of content with the agents, and I, I, I think it's great. It's going to be a great thing to do for, for players to discover. So I wouldn't want to spoil too Brilliant. much about that. To be honest, <laughs> okay. we want we yeah, Rome is a massive scope game, and we want to get you know that period right from where we start near the, in, in the in the Punic Wars um, all the way up to kind of you know the the heights of the of the, of the imperial period. Right, so it's a massive period of history. Um, so even if we have you know just one turn per year. Right, that still means you know around over a good 300, 300 turns of gameplay, which is um, you know more than before. So yeah, and obviously you can keep playing, um, yeah. you know. So yeah, it's it it is it is a massive a massive scope of time. Absolutely brilliant. Well, thank you very much for your cool. time. And uh, obviously, Total War Rome Two is out September third. Uh, make sure you uh, check out links in the description for pre-orders and lots more interviews and information. Thanks for watching. Comment rate and subscribe.